Hello, how are you? And there is a very good news before I begin with today's capsule summary. We are starting with topic-wise, unit-wise quizzes for the upcoming NET exam. Yes, it has always been in demand. And again, we're getting these requests that kindly begin with the quizzes, which help students immensely. But this time, these quizzes will be with a difference. How? They will come in three phases, okay? Each phase will make you or bring you closer to the exam, make you exam ready, make you career ready. We'll give you all the details. Just stay tuned to our channel. And with this good note, I am starting with today's capsule summary. It is the farmished road. Farmished means excessively hungry. How can the road be hungry? Oh, you'll know everything. Listen, the, no the name of the novel is The Farmished Road. It was awarded the Booker Prize for Fiction in 1991. Published in the same year, that is 1991, author is Sir Ben Okri. Look at Mr. Ben Okri on the screen. Born in 1959 in Nigeria, he lives in England. The genre of the farmish road is magic realism, where magic is just a part of life. There is no distinction between magic or reality. And also it's a building's Roman because it will talk about the growth of the protagonist. Here, who is the protagonist? Azaro, Azaro. The setting of the farmish road is an unnamed Nigerian village in the 1960s. And the narrator is first person narration. Who is this first person? The narrator is the protagonist, that is Azaro. And also, The Farmish Road is a part of a trilogy of novels, which is written by Ben Okri. First is The Farmish Road, published 1991. Second is Songs of Enchantment, published 1993. And third is Infinite Riches, published 1998. With this, let's start with The Farmish Road. Listen to the lines from the beginning of the novel. Quote, In the beginning, there was a river. The river became a road and the road branched out to the whole world. And because the road was once a river, it was always hungry. And that land of beginnings, spirits mingled with the unborn. In that land of beginnings, spirits mingled with the unborn. Do you understand? Here how the road, you know, the river will become a road. And the road will start eating. It will become a monster. This is what you will hear throughout. Basically, the farmish road has been divided into eight sections or eight books. How Ben Okri describes them. Eight books. Okay. So the protagonist of the novel is Azaro. Azaro is an abiku child. Who is an abiku child? Spirit child. Spirit children who die before puberty, but they are born again. Why this cycle of birth and rebirth? Because Abiku spirits did not get a proper burial during their lifetime or they were unhappy on earth when they were alive. Abiku literally means born to die. Here theme is African spirituality. Let me make it very easy for you. Basically, in African uh, tradition, a child is born in a house, but he or she dies in infancy or in early childhood. After death, the body is gone, of course. The same soul returns to the mother again. But then it dies again before reaching puberty. The, sa the body is gone. The same soul returns. These are Abhiku children. Now, why are these Abhiku children belonging to Abhiku spirits? When originally these children were born, these Abhiku spirits were born, maybe they did not get a proper burial. Maybe they did not have a very happy life which made their spirit always a wandering spirit. You know, Jesse bolte na Hindi mein shanti nahi mili atma ko, bas take it like that. This abiku atma has not got shanti or has not got moksha. That is why it is continuously coming, re-coming, going, coming, going, okay? And they are constantly, even when these abiku spirits are on earth, they are constantly in touch with the spiritual heaven Lee cousins. Do you understand? So if there's an Abiku child, he knows that he's born in this family and he will die soon and he will go to his spiritual cousins. He knows he will come back. He knows he will die again. Abiku children know it. it is it easy? So Azaro, the protagonist of the farmish road, is an Abiku. But unlike other Abiku children or spirits, Azaro, he is different. Once on earth, he does not want to return to the spiritual world. 
Why? As, Ara as Azaro says himself, quote, to make happy the bruised face of the woman who would become my mother. Basically, Azaro loves his parents. He loves his mother and father. His mother, who is very gentle and practical. His father, who is a straightforward man, but then he's a little violent. He keeps on drinking. He is abusive, but then he likes his father also. Okay, so Azaro loves his parents. He is here on earth he knows he has to go back to the spiritual world but he does not want to he decides that i will not go back i will stay here for this bruised face woman who is my mother for her happiness i will stay once as a child he was pronounced dead his body was put in a coffin but for the love of his parents he fought with the spiritual cousins and he returned how he started <laughs> coughing in the coffin coughing in the coffin and all the villagers, they are amused and shocked. And they quickly take the Azaro out of the coffin. Not just that. Azaro gets separated from his parents many times as a child. How? In riot. By kidnapping. He, go, he got kidnapped once. By visions. By fatal fevers. Deadly fevers. And also by death, as I just told you. But he returns. He returns. Why? Because he loves his parents. Therefore, he is named or renamed as Lazaro. Lazaro from Lazarus. Lazarus is a biblical reference here in the novel because Jesus brought Lazarus back to life. He was in tomb for four days, this person Lazarus. Jesus resurrected Lazarus after four days. Okay, so from Lazarus came Lazaro, from Lazaro became Azaro and Azaro is the protagonist of the farmist road who does not want to go. He's literally hanging somewhere in the interspace between the spirit world and the living world. He's hanging in between. He's neither a human nor a complete spirit. He does not want to enter the spiritual world. He wants to stay on earth. Gradually, because of being an abiku spirit or an abiku child, Azaro learns to control his power. How? He can see other people's dreams. He can communicate with animals and spirits alike. He has visions. He knows what is happening in other people's minds. And this is why he creates a lot of mischief at the start of the novel. His father tells him that you're a very mischievous boy. People everywhere complain about you. You know, you're so mischievous. That is what Azaro is like. A little bit about Azaro's parents now. Azaro's parents are very poor in the newly independent Nigeria. His mother is a hawker and very hard worker and his father is a laborer, okay? Because of working so hard, picking up heavy load, he's literally a bent man, okay? Nonetheless, his father, who's called dad, dad hosts lavish parties and gets heavily drunk. He beats Azaro and his wife often for the trouble Azaro causes to the neighbors as a spirit child. And the family lives in debt because of this extravagant lifestyle of dad. Another character introduced is the farmish road is called Madam Koto. Madam Koto. And Madam Koto is actually, you know, the only character I will say who has a name, who has a designation. Otherwise, you'll hear Azaro's mother, Azaro's father, party of the rich, party of the poor. Madam Koto is like that proper name you will you know, here in the novel. So let's listen who is Madam Koto in the farmish road. Madam Koto owns a bar in Azaro's village. She invites Azaro to her bar every day because when she, you know, sees Azaro for the first time, she feels that this child is different. Therefore, she feels that Azaro will encourage friendly spirits to visit her bar. So at the start of the novel, she invites Azaro every day to her bar. She even steals Azaro's blood to keep herself young. Now here, politics enters the farmish road. How? Listen. Once, the newly formed political parties of Nigeria called the Party of the Rich and the Party of the Poor visit the village of Azaro and Madam Koto's bar in particular. To attain power over the other, one over the other, that is the poor want power, the rich also want power. These are political parties. Both the parties start making false promises and they start dividing the villagers. Here, the theme of political turmoil is discussed in a newly independent country like Nigeria. The party of the rich distributes powdered milk. They also distribute food. But unluckily, nobody knows, this powdered milk turns out to be contaminated. Oh, villagers fall sick 
and just at this time the blame blame game begins blame game party of the rich start blaming the party of the poor for the contamination they say oh we did not distribute this milk they were the party of the poor who were disguised in our dresses in our way and they were the ones who were distributing the milk that was not the case it was the rich whose you know milk was contaminated and the villagers they fell sick now not convinced with this reason the villagers riot and the division becomes clear how is the division listen the village gets divided because of politics azaro's family and people like them they come on the side of party of the poor whereas madam koto and landlord on whose land or in whose house this azaro's family lives so this rich landlord this madam koto and the other influential people of the village they go on the side of party of the rich basically even in this newly independent country political upheaval disturbance civil war as it began then you know and all of it is because of their own people right the britishers left but then yeah what britishers did it was because of that maybe that the peace did not return in the country then just at this time there's a photographer in the farmish road whose name is jeremia jeremia takes a photo click of the rich people's van just after the poisoning and this causes grave problems for jeremia why because of course the party of the rich is influential he has to go in hiding and where does he hide azaro's father agrees to shelter jeremia against the risks involved now here i have to tell you about the oral tradition that ben okri has used in the farmish road he himself says that i grew up listening to wonderful fantastic stories and that is what i have tried to create in the farmish road a lot of oral stories have been told here and there in the novel azaro loves to listen to, to these stories that his father and his mother tell him occasionally so azaro grows up listening to numerous stories from his parents he fondly remembers one story told by his father it was about king of the road listen to this story it is interesting i'll tell you the king of the road was a giant who lived in the forest due to human encroachment in the forest he was forced to leave his forest home and live on the roads he demanded sacrifices from the people who therefore conspired to kill him they professed an idea they served the king of the road a poisoned meal but instead of getting killed the king of the road got a stomach ache which made him even hungrier he got so hungry that he began to eat himself only until his stomach was left after this the earth received rains continuously for 7 days and this led to his stomach getting washed into the roads making it a part of the road after reciting this story azad rose's father warns him line from the story what had happened was that the king of the road had become part of all the roads in the world he is still hungry he is still hungry as aro and he will always be hungry that is why there are so many accidents in the world and there is also and that is also why a small boy like you must be very careful how you wander about in this world did you listen to this story there are many stories like this in the farmish road okay now after this let's again continue with the political turmoil that's happening the party of the rich and the poor after the political upheaval madam koto's wealth increases tremendously coat her frame became bigger that is she became fat her voice became arrogant she wore a lot of bangles and necklaces she walked slowly like one who has recently acquired power while azaro's mother and the other poors in the village they got weaker more accepting more afraid one day now listen to the change in the story azaro's father decides to become a professional boxer yes all of a sudden you will hear in the story that now he wants to become a boxer why he is violent he is outrageous he knows how to fight for his own rights so he wishes to sweat it out in the boxing ring moreover he wants a sense of entertainment for the village oh there is so much political turmoil upheaval people are dying because of hunger there is no food there is no entertainment there is no water there is scarcity of everything in this village azaro's dad wants an entertainment therefore he 
thinks that he should be a boxer and entertainment should enter the village. Yes, when Azaro hears this, he's very happy for his dad and he helps him in his training. No matter Azaro and his mother, they have nothing to eat. But Azaro's dad takes a very, you know, uh, good diet because he wants to do boxing. But soon after this, something happens. Azaro's dad starts getting attacked by the spirits. And Azaro is the only one who can see them. This convinces his dad further that he must do boxing. Why? Because something has happened which has upset these spirits. You know, so he should fight these evil spirits out of the town and also undermine their authority. Here, there's a theme of spiritual heritage. Until now, we thought that it was only Azaro who could see the spirits, talk to them, communicate with them. Somewhere, his father also is getting involved in this. Do you understand? Spirits are coming to him, fighting him. So this is a spiritual heritage. At this time around the village, Azaro's father became very famous and his name became Black Tiger. People in the village started calling Azaro's dad as Black Tiger. So we will also call him Black Tiger from now. Now let's listen to what's happening to Madam Koto. Madam Koto continues to amass wealth and power. Her bar gets electricity first in the entire village. She buys a personal car. Whereas right now, Azaro's father, he acquires a group of beggars in the village whom he wishes to educate and give a better life. He doubles up his dream, not just as a boxer, but also as a politician. He thinks he will become a politician and change the face of his village and Nigeria as a whole. Now, listen to a fight scene. In a tough fight with a legendary boxer called Green Leopard, Black Tiger wins. Although he suffered so much physically that he enters coma due to his injuries for several days. It is Azaro who brings Black Tiger or his dad back to life, back from coma or the spiritual world. Yes, and you know, many a times the Farmish Road is compared as you know, the Nigerian version of 100 Years of Solitude. Why? Because in both these novels, there is a very blurred distinction between drama, that is between, you know, reality and fiction. You will not come to know where reality ends and fiction begins. Yes? Now, at this time, a rumor spreads around the village that Madam Koto is pregnant. Yes, Azaro is getting visions of Madam Koto. Azaro thinks that she has three monsters inside her womb. And in Azaro's vision, she becomes a vampire and the king of the road. She's only a part-time human being. Otherwise, she's a wolf, just like the party of the rich people. And her bar also, let me tell you, eventually, in the course of the novel, Madam Koto's bar turns into a brothel. And this takes us to the end of the Farmish Road. How does the novel end? One final fight is planned between the Black Tiger, that is Azaro's dad, and an opponent who is very deceitful, who's a cheat. Okay, the entire village is present, even the rich party, the poor party, the influential people, everybody's present to witness this fight. Bets have been put up, you know, for the widow. Now, a man in the crowd keeps on worrying Black Tiger, despite which, you know, in spite of this, you know, disturbance, he fights courageously, valiantly, and he wins. When he pulls, you know, after he won, just imagine this scene, Black Tiger pulls off the mask of the opponent. And what does he see? It's not a human being. The face is not clear. It's a blur face. It is a spirit. It's a ghostly, inhuman spirit. When people see it, they are scared. And Azaro's father falls into a deep sleep, which continues for three days. And at the end of the novel, it is the vision of Azaro's father that we witness. It is not Azaro's vision. It is the Black Tiger's vision that ends the Farmish Road. He has visions of sleeping giant, a beneficent king of the road, redeeming the world as he slept, who mistakenly thinks himself alone because he did not see the others. Finally, when Black Tiger wakes up from his long sleep, he tells one last story to Azaro and his wife, in which his father, that is whose father? Black Tiger's father or Azaro's grandfather. So his father, the priest of the roads, orders him, to keep his doors and heart open, even though it is more difficult to love than to die. 
When he awakens, there is new peace in the house as well as in the village. Azaro feels that the spirits are finally at rest and they have been put at rest by his boxer, by his boxer father. And Azaro utters these lines. The law is simple. Every experience is repeated or suffered till you experience it properly and fully the first time. And after this, there is another morning when Azaro wakes up, the room is empty. Mom and dad are gone and the good breeze had not lasted. Is it an ambiguous end to the novel? You should read about it. With this, we are done with The Farmish Road. And there are such beautiful quotations in this novel. I thought I will just write them. Look here, whenever you have time, I'm not reading them right now. Whenever you have time, I have given few important quotes from The Farmish Road. There are four on this page. There are till seven on this one. Please see, read them, read them, okay, read them. Quotations will give you a greater insight into the novel. And this takes us to the last page. Here we are done with the farmish road. Did you like it? I liked it. You know, it actually ends, you know, Azaro thinks that when the spirits are at rest, he feels that finally his village will now be at peace because his village is not at peace. People are hungry. People have nothing. They are poor. The, the country is really in dire need of wealth, dire need of support and a good political system, which is also not happening. Yes, this is Hina from Team Wallach. Take very good care of yourself and get ready for our quiz program. The ultimate upcoming net quiz program. Details shall follow soon. Bye-bye. Take care.